Okay. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay. I understand that there's been some uh, problems with distortion. Um, the, the sound has not been that good uh, this morning, and it uh, seems that Michael was having the same problem, so it may be something to do with Skype. Um, okay, we'll, we'll um, try to just do a few minutes of Q&A if anyone has a question related to the study in First Peter that we've been doing. You're welcome at this time to raise your hand and ask your question or make your comment. Okay, uh, we don't seem to have any questions at this time. Uh, I would just like to make one correction. Um, the Bible study we hope to do will actually, uh, we're, we're pushing it back to early May. Uh, so we'll keep you informed about that, when that'll start. Lord willing, that'll be a uh, nightly Bible study, Monday through Friday. And then on Friday, the last night um, of the week, we'll, we'll have a question and answer following it. But um, at this point, I'll turn it back over to Michael. Okay, um, Michael says we have some questions. Uh, please, for the future, uh, if you have a question... Um, try to ask it right away so we don't sit here uh, uh, for a few minutes with with no questions. Uh, we'll we'll give it a, a couple of minutes in the future. If there's no questions, we're just going to end the Q and A and and move on. But at this point, we do have a couple of questions. Let's go to the first person on the phones. Please go ahead with your question. Um, hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Chris. How are you? Doing well. Okay, just want to just have a comment. I just want you guys to know that thank you again for what you're doing, but um, you are having some problems on Pal Talk. We can't really hear what you're saying. Sometimes you're blacking in and out. We ha we only get half the conversation sometimes. So just to let you know what was going on, in case you didn't know. Well, thank you. Um, I. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know what the problem is. Um, overall, Skype has been pretty good, but we have had a couple of occasions where there's been a, a, a technical problem. Seems like today was one. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully um, that won't be a problem in the future. So now you sound nice and clear. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. All right, let's go to the next person on the phones. Welcome to eBible's Question and Answer. Yeah, hi, Chris. Um, uh, Proverbs 8.25. Proverbs 8.25 says, um, Before the mountains were settled, before the hills... Was I brought forth? Um, I'm sorry. Let's go back a couple of, uh, of verses. Um, go back to uh, um, tw twenty. Start with twenty-two. Jehovah possessed me in the beginning of His way, before His works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains ab abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Yeah. Um, now, what I was uh, suggesting is this is uh, language that uh, shows that Christ uh, was um, before the foundation of the earth. Would you say oh, that's yeah. correct? Yeah. The, um, in Proverbs 8, um, it's referring to wisdom, and uh, wisdom is personified because Jesus is wisdom. And and so it, it's saying that wisdom was set up from everlasting, and and that's Christ. So, yeah, it definitely is um, indicating the eternal uh, nature of of Christ Himself. Okay, I just thought that would help you study. All right, thank you. Well, thank you for those verses, and let's go to the next person on the phones. Welcome to our uh, Sunday afternoon question and answer. How you doing, Chris? Um, could you read two scriptures? And I'd like to ask my question. Um, first is Luke eight twenty-two to twenty-five. 
Can you uh, speak into your phone a little bit or into your mic a little bit more? Yeah, can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah. All right. Please um, go ahead. Luke eight twenty two to 25, and then I want to uh, – could you read another one after that, please? Okay, Luke eight twenty two. Now, it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake. They were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and water, and they obey him. And the other is Matthew 25, 1 to 6. Then I'd like to ask a question. Matthew 25. Verse 1 says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Um, in Luke eight twenty three, when Jesus falls asleep on the boat and there's the storm, is there any relation to that sleep, even though it's uh, it's actually the word a sleep? Um, is there any relation to that word in its context to either the carrying or sleeping in the parable of the ten virgins? Uh, not not that I know of um, with with the the ten virgins and they're sleeping. This is referring to the church age. Um, we we have the wise and the foolish together, just as the wheat and the tares were together. And remember, in um, Matthew 13's parable of the wheat and the tares, um, it, it says while men slept. An enemy sowed tares amongst the wheat, and uh, God, in in some ways, views the entire church age as a period of of sleeping for saved and unsaved, uh, because the Bible was um, it was sealed, it was closed up. Um, you know, there's a good verse that, that explains this in Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 29, it says in verse 10, For Jehovah has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and has closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I am not learned. So verse 10 tells us that the vision of, uh, or jo the Lord has poured out the spirit of deep sleep and closed your eyes. And that has to do with um, when your eyes are closed, you fail to understand certain truths. And and remember the uh the Word of God, the Bible, was sealed up till the time of the end, as God said to Daniel. And uh, therefore, throughout the church age, the Bible was sealed. Our eyes were closed, whether wise or foolish, believer, a true believer, or professed believer, but actually an unbeliever. Uh, no one was able to understand the Bible until the time of the end, and then God uh, opened up the understanding of his people. And that's exactly what we have in Matthew 25. 
you know, when it says that the ten virgins went forth to meet the bridegroom, well, that 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 didn't just happen uh, last year or ten years ago. That that's happened throughout the whole New Testament period. Believers have been going forth to meet the bridegroom, to meet Christ all through the New Testament era, and and yet the, they fell asleep. And when when they awoke, um, uh, because a cry was made at at midnight, really that's in the midst of the night, which would identify with the Great Tribulation period and the cry that went out of Christ's coming. Then they they all awoke, and those that had oil in their lamp, and the lamp is the word of God, and and oil in their vessel be referring to the Holy Spirit within them, which enlightens, the Holy Spirit enlightens the book, the Bible, and enables them to see. Their eyes are no longer closed. They can understand what God is saying in many things, as we've learned many things during the Great Tribulation period. That's uh, the emphasis of, of this parable. Thanks. Okay, thank you for uh, your your question in those passages. And uh, this time we're, we're going to uh, conclude our question and answer and uh, then Michael will join with us for, uh, or or be back to let us know uh, what's going to happen next. But thank you for your questions and your comments.